Now I'm going to explain the problem D hexagon. And uh, in this problem, we have a hexagon tiling of the plane. And uh, the requirement is quite simple. We have to go from the cell 00, zero to a certain cell XY. And uh, we can only use six types of edges labeled as they stand here, C1, C2, C3, up to C6. And we need to find the shortest path from 0, 0 to XY. And we know the cost of each uh, possible path, like the cost to get through this way, through this way, and so on. Now, if the coordinates were smaller, we, we could have done a dextra and just represent a graph and do a simple dextra. But the problem is that uh, the coordinates are quite big as in their absolute value is up to 10 to the 9th, as in negative 10 to the 9th up to a positive 10 to the 9th, like the coordinates. And extra obviously doesn't work because there are too many squares which have to be checked, or in this case, hexagon. So we need to find uh, something which uh, works easier, and we should definitely try to use the fact that the costs are fixed for a certain type of edge, like all the costs are identical, as in the cost of every edge of type C1 is identical. Like if we go from my negative 2, negative 1 to negative 1, 0, it's going to be the same cost as if we are going from 1, 1 to 2, 2, because they go towards the same direction. Now, in order to make things easier, maybe we need to consider only a subset of edges and maybe do some math to solve the problem. And uh, this actually works. And uh, you can actually check this out by uh, doing a dextra on a smaller hexagon table. Let's say you only take like the all the coordinates with absolute value less than 100 or something. And you try some brute force dextra. And in order to actually find a pattern, which helps you find the efficient solution. And uh, after you create uh, this brute force, or figure it out with some other way, but I personally prefer to figure out such observations by using a brute force, uh, you can actually discover that you only need to use uh, two edges. and uh, the reason why this works is because um, we can assume the coordinates to increase and decrease with uh, all the possible combinations uh, with respect to the hexagon table. And uh, as long as we have two kinds of edges which uh, don't work oppositely, like C1 and C4, for example, we shouldn't use both of them because they would just cancel each other we can actually get to our target. And in order to cause uh, this uh, solution, you only need to use um, two for loops and uh, some math, as I'm going to show here. So here we have the costs, and uh, we fix the types of edges we are going to use. And all we have to do is to make some easy computations in order to figure out which uh, of the differences are going to be used or not. The proof for this problem uh, is based on linear algebra. You can actually prove it quite nicely if you are interested. But anyway, this kind of problem is a problem which uh, can be solved using uh, quite dissimilar things you would use for such constructive problems, just like maybe in C, in the problem C from this contest, where I told you earlier that uh, you can also figure it out by using brute force. And overall, I'd say uh, it's a pretty interesting problem, which uh, I hope you enjoyed it, solving in the contest. And I'm going to continue with the last problem of the contest, which is the problem E.